Hey guys, in this video I'm going to very quickly talk you through some of the uh, items in the menu on the Nikon D3300. I'm not going to go through everything in great detail because there's a lot in here. Uh, some of it's self-explanatory, some of it you probably won't ever use. So I'm just going to go through some of the more important uh, menu items and show you the best way to use them. So first of all, obviously turn the camera on and press the menu button and that will bring you into the playback menu if it doesn't bring you into that menu it's probably because you've already been in there and it remembers uh, where you last were so just scroll across back up to the play icon up here and that will bring you into the playback menu okay so the first option we've got here is delete obviously that's very self-explanatory um, you can delete all of the pictures uh, selected date or selected pictures um, so that's very self-explanatory, I don't need to go into that. The next one down is called playback folder. This basically is telling the camera where the images are stored on the memory card. Um, you can select it to choose the current, which is titled D3300, or you can choose to select other folders on the card. I've only got the one folder on the card, which is that one. So just leave that alone, you don't really need to play with that too much. Next one, playback display options. If you click OK, you get some extra options here. Additional photo info, again, you can press across and you can get some more info. Now what these do is when you press play after you've taken a picture and it shows the photograph, if you select some of these, you can actually then scroll through a number of screens with these options that you've selected. So rather than just showing the photograph, um, you can have it so it shows just the photograph, you can have it so you get another screen that shows the highlights, another screen that shows the histogram, another screen that shows the shooting data, and another screen that shows an overview of all of the settings. This is a um, really good idea to set some of these up, uh, especially the histogram and the highlights. Um, then you can instantly review your photograph and uh, just by scrolling across through the photo you can see different options that you've got here. If none of these are selected then it will just simply show the photograph on its own and there won't be any other screens to scroll through, it will just keep scrolling uh, to the same thing. Also we have transition effects, that's just when you uh, scroll between photos, you can have that on or off, whichever you prefer. Image review, I have this set on, this is when you take a picture the image shows up on the screen straight away, you can turn that off um, so you take a picture and the screen will just stay blank. Rotate tool, that means that if you take a picture in uh, portrait mode it will rotate it automatically for you in the camera so you can get a proper view of it on the back screen. Slideshow, self-explanatory, DPOF print order, I've never ever used this, I don't know if any people do actually use this, um, but that's basically when you want to uh, print off a load of thumbnails on some paper. Rating, you can actually rate uh, the photos that you've taken uh, up to five stars I think it is and that, that helps you sort them out when you upload them into software if you're using ViewNX2 um, those stars will automatically be added in the program then you can find your favourites easier again I don't tend to use things like this very often if, if I don't like the look of a photo I tend just to delete it after I've taken it rather than um, sort of changing the ratings in the camera. Uh, next we have send to smart device, I don't have any smart devices so I can't do that, you can see it says it's not available. So that's the playback menu, next we have a look at the shooting menu. So the next one down as you can see is the shooting menu, if you go across the first one is reset shooting menu, so if you change any of these settings you've got here and you mess something up and you don't know what you've done you can go into reset shooting menu and you can reset it back to the factory defaults. The next one, image quality, I've got it on normal at the moment. If we go in here you've got several options, JPEG basic, normal, fine, NEF and NEF plus JPEG. NEF is a raw file, uh, NEF is just Nikon's uh, file system, Canon has CR2, uh, other manufacturers have different ones as well. Uh, JPEG basic, that's a small file with um, a reduced resolution, normal, 
fine is a higher resolution and then obviously raw is full resolution with no processing added whatsoever there's a lot of debate about which is best jpeg or raw you can go to other people's channels to argue about that personally i shoot in raw most of the time but if you want to shoot in jpeg then go for it i have no problem with that whatsoever or you can have the best of both worlds you can shoot in raw and jpeg and then you've got a nice jpeg image ready to go or you can play around with a raw file as well in software image size again this is sort of adds on to the previous one you can have uh, jpeg basic fine and normal in all these different sizes as well so if you're shooting something specific and you know that you're not going to want a massive picture you can shoot a smaller resolution as you can see it's 6 megapixels 13.5 megapixels or full 24 megapixels for the large if you shoot in raw none of this will apply because raw is raw and it's the full resolution in the full size next one is white balance at the moment I have this on auto but you've got all the different options and also the options to select a custom white balance you can either measure it from a, uh, a white card or a grey card or you can use a photo that you've already taken I'll probably do a separate video on white balance because it does get a bit complicated and I don't want to go through it right now next one picture control if you're shooting in JPEG then this will apply if you're shooting in RAW then it won't these are basically different settings that get added to your pictures and it basically boosts the color and the saturation and the sharpening depending on what sort of look you want from your photos one thing to be aware of if you're using the uh, auto modes in the mode dial like the macro mode or the portrait mode it may change what you've selected here already without you knowing about it say if you've gone into portrait mode on the mode dial then the camera will automatically change the picture style to portrait mode without you having any input on that even if you've got it set to something else if you use uh, view nx2 software then you can actually change these in the software after the picture has been taken and it will apply those settings for you next is auto distortion control if you're using a wide angle lens and often you'll get barrel distortion or various other types of distortion in the image if you have this turned on the camera will automatically try and sort that out for you um, by adjusting the image um, I tend to leave this off usually in all my cameras because I prefer to do it in software um, I get more control over it um, but if you don't want to be messing about with that then put it on and the camera does a pretty good job um, in most circumstances so you can have that on with no problems at all next is color space you've got srgb or adobe rgb um, i wouldn't mess around with this too much i would leave it in srgb um, for the most part you only really need adobe rgb in certain circumstances and if you know what those circumstances are then you probably already know when you need it if you're not sure just leave it in srgb next is active delighting on or off um, this is another in-camera process and it will actually try to adjust the highlights and the shadows to get a more balanced exposure um, this, it works quite well actually it does tend to balance the image out um, again you can add this in software in view nx2 if you haven't um, got it on in the camera um, i tend to leave this off poorly again because i shoot raw and i don't need it because it doesn't apply to the raw image if you're shooting in jpeg though you can try it on and off and see what you prefer next one is noise reduction on or off again at the moment it's on on just because the camera is on its default state i tend to get again leave this off again because i shoot raw if you shoot jpeg then it's probably a good idea to leave it on because uh, it's very hard to get rid of noise in software if you've shot a jpeg image uh, basically noise reduction just reduces some of the digital noise you get at higher isos you'll see like a, a grain uh, in the images and that just helps to reduce that uh, it does work quite well on jpegs but again if you're shooting raw there's no need to have it on next is iso sensitivity settings you've got several options in here you can change the iso 
from 100 all the way up to high 1. But as well as that, you can set the auto ISO sensitivity control to on. And what this will then do is it will automatically select the best ISO the camera can get away with up to a maximum of whatever you specify. I would tend to leave it around 16 or 3200 and um, depending on where you are shooting. If you're shooting somewhere really dark um, then you can probably put it up a bit more but to be safe I'll probably leave it about 16 or 32. What you can then also do is tell the camera that you don't want it to raise the ISO unless your shutter speed um, hits a certain level. Uh, only you can know where to set it here because different people can hand hold differently. The purpose of auto ISO is to keep the shutter speed high enough that you don't get motion blur in your images from wobbling your hands about. Now I've got pretty wobbly hands um, so I would probably have it set somewhere around 1 60th um, normally on my other cameras. But the great thing about the D3300 it actually has an auto mode and this will detect the focal length of the lens that you're using and it will then automatically adjust the shutter speed so that you don't get motion blur from your hands moving in the image. Um, there's a rule of thumb called uh, one times the focal length that your shutter speed should be. That works great on full frame cameras. Um, if you had a focal length of 200 millimeters, you'd want a shutter speed of at least one two hundredth of a second. Um, basic cameras like this have slightly smaller sensors so that rule actually changes so if you had a 200 millimeter focal length lens on you'd want a shutter speed of about 1 250th of a second to cancel out that motion blur but with this camera you can just stick it in auto and it will do all that for you it's a really great addition next is AF area mode uh, we have a uh, viewfinder and live view so you can actually get different views if you're looking through the viewfinder you can have single point dynamic 3d tracking or auto area it's quite likely when you first get the camera it'll be set to auto area uh, this means that the camera chooses where to focus but I would really really recommend trying single point or dynamic area and um, this allows you to pick the um, the, air, the auto focus point and that will give you much more control over where your focus is going. Single point autofocus, that's one point that you select and the camera will focus just on that point. Dynamic area, you choose the focal point uh, that you want but the camera will also use focus points surrounding it if the subject moves out of the focal point that you've selected when you've got the uh, shutter button half pressed. That's really good if you've got, um, say, like on a sports field or something and you've got people running about. You can put the focus mark over the person and try and track them, but if they sort of lose, if they go out of the area that you've set your focus point to, the camera will automatically pick them up on the next focus point. 3D tracking is similar, but that also means um, if they run towards you or away from you, side to side, the camera will also try and track the subject for as long as you're half pressing the shutter button. We've also got live view and movie. Um, in live view you can have face priority, wide area, normal area and subject tracking. Um, obviously they're all pretty self-explanatory. Normal area is just a small selection in the middle of the frame that the camera will try and focus on. Wide area gives it a wider area. Face priority obviously tries to track faces and subject Tracking um, is when you tell the camera where to focus on and then it will try and track that subject for as long as it can. Just play around with those different modes when you're trying to track stuff. Um, face priority works quite well and subject tracking is a bit hit and miss depending on the subject and the light that you're in. Next we have the built-in AF Assist Illuminator. All this does is there's a little light on the front of the camera that when you half press the shutter button lights up and throws a little bit of light on the subject which allows the camera to try and focus a bit better. If you're somewhere where you want to be a bit discreet then I would turn this off because it's quite a bright light and it's obvious that you're trying to photograph somebody or something 
when you've got this enabled but it does allow you to obtain focus a lot easier in darker situations and metering I'm not going to go into great detail I'll probably do a separate video on this I have done one before for the D3100 so you can go check that out if you want but basically we've got three options matrix center weighted and spot for now I would leave it in matrix metering until you get a bit more confident in your photography and then you can try these other ones um, but they are a little bit more technical so I'm not going to go into it just leave it on matrix metering for now and uh, I'll do another video on that later flash control for built-in flash uh, you have TTL or manual basically the built-in flash when you have it in TTL it's all completely uh, automatic the camera decides how much flash output to put out to light the subject properly or you can have it on manual and you can tell it what power to use again this is getting a bit more technical um, for now just leave it on TTL once you get a bit more confident in your photography you can try setting it manually and trying different effects different powered flash next is movie settings and you've got the frame size and frame rate you've got selection of different HD modes and different frame rates uh, to pick whichever one you want so I'm leaving it in the default 1080 60 frames per second movie quality normal or high quality speaks for itself I'm gonna put it in high quality microphone automatic manual or off I'm just going to leave it in auto wind noise reduction on manual movie settings this allows you to change the exposure uh, when you're filming a movie rather than the camera doing it all for you so if you want a bit more control over your movies so you can put it on on just be aware you have to set the exposure before you start shooting you can't do it during the shooting And then we're back to the beginning. So next up is the setup menu. Okay, so again, the first one we have is reset setup options. So if you start playing around again and you mess something up, you can go in there and reset it back to factory default. We have format memory card, speaks for itself. Monitor brightness changes the brightness of the monitor. If you go in, you can actually see these different colored bands. You want to get it so you can sort of just about see uh, everything don't have this set too bright or too dark because then it will affect how your photographs look on the back of the screen and that might fool you into thinking that your photos are either too bright or too dark the best way to get around that is to use the histogram that we spoke about a little bit earlier in the viewing options and then you'll be able to see whether your images are how they should be so I'm just going to leave it back where it was on naught. Uh, info display format loads of options in here loads of different screens you can have it the classic way or the graphic way and the same again for when you're in the semi-manual modes I'm just going to leave it as they were but you can play around with those auto info display on or off that just uh, whether the info screen pops up by itself or not clean image sensor you can clean it now or you can clean it start up and shut down you can have it just on startup, just on shot, uh, shutdown, both or off. I tend to leave it on startup and shutdown. Lock mirror up for cleaning. This is a very important uh, option actually. If you've seen my video on how to clean your sensor, then uh, you'll know what this is for. But basically, when you want to manually clean your sensor because the auto clean isn't doing a good enough job, if you press start when you press the shutter button it lifts the mirror up and it holds the mirror up and it holds the shutter curtain open so you can clean the sensor only do this when you have a fully charged battery or the camera is plugged into a power source because if it loses power halfway through you will destroy your camera image dust off ref photo if you don't want to clean your sensor you've got another option here what this does is it takes a photograph of a plain white surface and then it maps where the dust is on your sensor and then it will automatically map those out of any other photograph that you take quite nifty but to be honest you're better off just cleaning your sensor flicker reduction you have auto 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz if you're shooting videos under certain types of lighting 
um, you can get a flicker effect from the light so you can choose um, the different ones if you're not sure what they do you can just press the question mark button and it will tell you what to do probably just best leaving on auto it does a good job time zone and date speaks for itself language auto image rotation speaks for itself image comments you can attach different comments to the metadata of your photographs uh, for instance you could put copyright your name you could put your web address um, you could put any little notes in there that you want to that will then get attached to the image file itself and uh, won't be able to be erased auto off timers this is for when the screen turns on and off and all the other different things you've got the playback and the menus image review live view and standby um, obviously they'll speak for themselves self timer uh, self timer delay you can have 10 seconds 5 seconds 2 seconds or 20 seconds and you can also choose how many shots the camera takes on self timer I've done a separate video on how to set that up so go check that out I'll put the link in the description below uh, the remote on duration 1 minute, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. This is how long the infrared receiver on the camera is active for when you're using the ML L3 remote control. Um, you can have that set to about 5 minutes is usually best. That preserves the battery life of the camera better. Beep, high or low or off. I'm going to have mine off because it's annoying. Range finder on or off. This is a really handy feature. I'd recommend you have this on. If you have a look at the help menu, it will tell you um, exactly what it is. So when you focus um, and look through the viewfinder, you'll see uh, the focus dot appears. Now obviously when you're in manual focus, um, you have to turn the focus ring yourself and get that dot. But sometimes it being a bit confusing which direction you need to turn the focus ring. So this will actually put arrows in the viewfinder and tell you which way to turn the focus ring to get focus. That's a really handy little feature that. File number sequence. This basically just means you can have the file numbers going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, or you can have it off and you can reset it. Um, some people like to have each new card starting from 1. Some people like to have the image files continuously going no matter how many different cards they use. So I'm just going to leave that on on. Buttons. You can assign uh, different functions to some of the buttons on the camera. I'll do another video on this because there's some really helpful things in here so I'll just quickly go through and show you some of the different options. I won't actually tell you what they all do at the moment. So keep an eye out for a separate video on that. This one is one of the most important ones on the camera actually. Um, slot empty release lock. If you forget to put a memory card in and you have enable release the camera will continue to take photographs but it will not save them there's no internal memory on the camera so I really 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 recommend you put this on lock this will physically stop you from taking photos if you haven't put a memory card in print date this will display the date and the time on the actual photo and it will be stamped on the photo itself uh, when you upload them or print them Personally, I have this off, I can't stand it, but if you're doing something where you need um, the time and date stamped on the image, then you can do that there. Storage folder, again, this is what we spoke about a little bit earlier. Um, you can have as many different folders and call them what you want. You can make a new one or you can rename them. I'm just going to leave it on the default. Accessory terminal, you can have the remote control. Uh, you can set it to take a photo or to record a movie and again you can assign the function button to do different things and you can also select uh, the GPS data in there if you've got the GPS dongle video mode speaks for itself HDMI speaks for itself wireless mobile adapter I don't have one so I'm going to turn that off and then the firmware you can um, update the firmware in there uh, as soon as there's a firmware update to do, I should do a video on how to do that. And then we're back to the beginning. This is a retouch menu. I'm not going to go through these today. I will do a separate video on this. And I will explain and show you what some of these different settings do. 
So for now, I hope that was helpful, guys. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments box, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Cheers, guys.